Welcome to building a full stack application from scratch. This is an InRhythm U Zoom lightning talk. We're gonna build a simple full stack application in TypeScript. We'll be doing this over a series of four videos. In this first video, we'll cover user stories, entity modeling, backend development. We'll be using Node, TypeScript, TypeORM, and Postgres. In the second video, we'll cover front end development, using Create React App, React Components, and TypeScript. In the third video, we'll cover infrastructure development, Docker deployment to AWS ECS, as well as test automation. In the fourth video, Cypress or an equivalent tool. Let's get started. Product has asked us to build a system for software engineering recruiting. As a recruiter, they need to be able to enter, change, and remove positions and candidates in the system. The acceptance criteria is that positions can be added, changed, or removed, and candidates can be added, changed, or removed. Before we can dive in and get started building, we have some pre-installations to do on your Mac. You need to install Homebrew by issuing a curl command. We should install and download Postgo to browse Postgres database. Then you should install Postgres as a service and start it, and then create the database, a schema, and some users. We called these recruiting. To complete setup, you should install Visual Studio Code, Postman, Node, and TypeScript Node. Now we can be begin building. So we'll open up VS Code and a new terminal, CD to desktop, make a directory called recruiting, and issue an npm init command. Having issued the npm init command, it's now asking me to walk through the prompts. I'm going to accept recruiting as a package name, version 1.0. I'll leave a description, I'll leave the entry point, and I'll leave a test command as well as Git repository keywords, author, license, all blank, and just say yes. Next up, we need to install a series of node packages. For example, node and the Koa Express-like router, as well as the router extension for it, the body, the logger, and core support. Then we can install packages for Postgres, TypeORM, and Reflect metadata. To speed things up, I copied over a handful of packages from a previous project. Please take a look at the dependencies and the dev dependencies. Now we issue npm i commands for these packages. As you can see, a package lock JSON has been generated. Let's make a source directory and create an app.ts file. As well, as well as import the key packages. Next up, we're gonna create a connection inside this app.ts by using the type ORM package. We'll create a new Koa app, and then we'll use this app async by passing in a context and handling the next promise, awaiting commands to be sent to it, emitting any errors. We'll set up a logger, we'll set up core support for cross origin, and we'll add a, a body handler. There, the connection has been added. Please note we hard-coded the port at 2999 and we left room to add routes. Next up, we're gonna create entities for candidate as well as position. You can see we have an import on an entity, primary generate column, column from type ORM, use an annotation add entity. We create a class, 
mark a ID that's a string type, uh, primary generated column, UUID, mark the column first name, column last name, and we added one for deleted. As you can see, candidate has been added as well as position has been added. Please note we need to add a TS config file in order to make Visual Studio Code happy compiling TypeScript. Now to serve access to these entities, we need to create a router. This is importing from COA, COA router. It will utilize type ORM to get a repository, handle HTTP status codes, gain access to the entity we just created, and we'll bring in a new errors file for unique key violations. Then we'll set up these router options with a prefix of slash candidates that basically routes that URI to this file. Instantiate this router class, passing in those options, and then we'll export this router default so it's available to the application. We'll do the same for positions as well. Now that we have the imports and boilerplate code set up, we can create a get function. This get is an asynchronous, asynchronous function that receives a context variable, sets up a repository by getting repository. You notice it's typed using the entity and it could be used to find entities. In this case, I added a condition looking where entities have not been soft deleted. And then in, it basically builds a, a body response with a data object and an array of candidates. That get method is used in the router slash get passing in the COA context and will be used later on in some of the other return methods. Now that get has been added, put us up next to insert database values into the database. First it checks if there's a request body, otherwise it issues a bad request, returns a 400. It builds a repository, again typed using candidate. We can then parse the request body into a candidate. It looks to find one record using this candidate's repo where it has not been deleted and the first name and the last name of the candidate does not exist. Because if it's found, it's gonna throw a unique key violation. Otherwise, if not found, it will create the candidate and save it and then return the list of all candidates created. We're gonna implement this put on both candidates and positions now. Next up is a patch method to just send a little snippet of JSON to the server and be applied to the existing entities. This is typically applied using the ID as a parameter. The function checks if the parameter has been passed, otherwise it sends a 400 bad request. Following the same pattern, it gets the repository and reuses the connection using the entity. It tries to find one using that ID if not found, it throws a not found exception because you can't patch an entity that doesn't exist. Then it attempts to merge logic by using that found entity as well as parsing the request body into a merged candidate object and saving that. Then it returns all the entities or all the candidates. Let's implement patch for both the candidate and the position router now. Now that patch has been implemented for both candidate and position routers, lastly, we're gonna implement delete. This accepts an ID as a parameter. It validates that the parameters have been added, otherwise sends back a bad request. Gets a handle on the repository and the connection. Checks to see if this entity exists. If not, it throws not found. Then it soft deletes this entity by setting the Boolean deleted equals true and then saves it. And lastly, returns all candidates or all entities. Let's implement that now for both candidates and positions. Congratulations, you now implemented all four methods on two of your routers. Now it's time to add it to the application by importing these routers and using them.
Before we start up this app and test it, I want to point out three config files. There's a nodemon.json, which watches source and serves changes. There's tsconfig, which we spoke about, the compiler's options. And then there's this new file, orm.config, which makes a connection to the Postgres database to localhost port 5432, recruiting username, blank password. We can now start our server by issuing the npm start command. And you should see a successful server start, including type rm creating tables dynamically for you. Create table position, create table candidate. You can now use Postman to hit the APIs to check to see if they work, see if they retrieve data and put data into the database. Turns a data array with no positions created. And we can go ahead and create a new engineer level two. Soft delete is false. In addition, you can check the data in the database itself by connecting to your local, going to your recruiting database, and querying the database. You can see a GUID has been created, engineer level two. Soft delete is false. To finish this lightning talk and exercise, we're gonna create a Docker file starting from the node 10 image with a working directory of user source app, copying over your package JSON, running npm install, copying over the rest of the files for the directory, exposing that port 2999 and issuing a command npm start. Now we can go ahead and build this Docker image. We are building this Docker image for subsequent videos so we can deploy this image to Elastic Container Service. The Docker image has been built, it's been tagged with latest. This completes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed building a full stack application from scratch, part one, the backend application server. Hopefully you'll tune in next week for part two.